42. Joe, we had the pleasure of uh, learning and meeting Joe out at the niche conferences, and we've learned a lot from him, and we're very, very impressed with him, which is why we brought him on. And, and Joe is considered the uh, foremost content marketing evangelist, and he is really at the top of his game and cutting edge when it comes to social media. And he's going to be talking about various subjects, but today he's going to be uh, concentrating on uh, Twitter and uh, why it's not stupid. And uh, and one other uh, note for Joe, he, we're, we're very excited to have him, and uh, just to kind of show you exactly the level of, uh, of uh, quality of, of uh, person as far as um, social media goes, he's about to go on a 22-city tour, and everyone can read more about that at OnlineMarketingSummit.com. I'll go ahead and post that uh, so everyone can view, and uh, you read a little bit about what Joe's uh, accomplishing. And um, I'll go ahead and let him take it from here. Uh, Joe, go ahead and take it, and uh, everyone pay attention as uh, we're all very interested in what Joe's uh, going to teach us. Thanks a lot. Hey, thank you. Can you hear me? Can you hear me okay, David? Uh, yes. Oh, I just wanted to make sure. You never know, quite know. Hey, thank, first of all, David, thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Uh, we're going to be talking a little Twitter today. Um, I do want – let me move this over here. Um, I'm going to do this full screen with everybody so you can kind of go through the presentation. And uh, I want to make sure we get through – I probably will go for about 30 minutes talking about Twitter. going to give some basics, overview, <laughs> like you said, David, why it's not stupid, and uh, where are some of the opportunities at for publishers today. I want to make sure that we leave some good time for Q&A. So uh, I guess what I would ask you to do if you want to – um, send questions. You can send them either to David uh, directly, or you could send them to all participants, or you could send them directly to me. If you send them directly to me, I won't get to them till the end because I'm going to be concentrating on the presentation, and then uh, we'll go through them afterwards and, and see if we can get through as many as possible. So let me go ahead and share this thing with everyone. <clears throat> so we're talking about Twitter basics for publishers. We want to keep it pretty basic here. So. If you're trying to figure out whether this is a good presentation for you, we're really going to talk about how you get started, why you should get involved in it, uh, if you should get involved in it, and then some of the op other opportunities about how you can get more followers and what you really need to do and what's accepted on Twitter, what's not accepted, and kind of next steps going forward. First of all, I should hire you as my uh, PR representative. Thanks for the introduction. I uh, do a lot on content marketing and custom publishing as well as social media. So that's kind of my space. Um, you'll see at the top where it says, Who's Joe Polizzi? That at Junta Joe, that's my Twitter call sign. So for those of you who aren't on Twitter right now and you're going to get on Twitter, you're going to have to pick your own call sign, and we'll talk about that in a little bit. But basically, consider myself the poster boy for content marketing. I uh, love orange. Uh, when you see me in any one of those 22 cities that David mentioned, I'll wear, be wearing some kind of an orange shirt in, in every one of them. Uh, a couple things I'd like to mention just about me. Um, so 42, John to 42 is the e honey for custom publishing or content marketing. So when brands come in to our site, uh, they're free. They're allowed to fill out a profile of their custom project. So let's say it's a custom publication, custom magazine, e-newsletter, even a social media program we do as a service is we hook them up with vendors that offer those services that that company is looking for. And a company up with three to five experts. So it's a free service for brands, marketers, clients, and then it's a paid service for content vendors that offer custom publishing services, and it's a monthly or an annual fee. We also want to tell you about we're launching the Content Marketing Institute here in the next couple of weeks, which will be the basically the how-to source for everything content marketing. We'll have some Twitter stuff on there as well, but just look out for that in the next few weeks coming out. Very interesting, just if you're a publisher and things we're launching that you might want to noodle on, uh, we just launched a product called Social Tract. Social Tract is a blogging service for HVAC contractors, and we partnered with a publication called HVCR. And the idea behind that is to go after reader revenue. And so what we do is we actually, it's a blogging service for readers. So HVACR business, their readers are contractors. So we actually create blogs and execute a blogging service for HVACR contractors. And if you have that certain kind of audience and you want more information about that, please let me know. I'd be happy to share anything on that. And then also relevant to what we're doing, I'm, I'm actually, we're launching a product here in the next month called Tail Foundry. And Tail Foundry is an outsourced 
marketing services group for publishers, specifically for people like you. So if you're trying to get into social media or custom publishing or any kind of marketing services like webcasts or digital magazines or whatever the case is, we will work with you as a private label service and help you to launch these things. So you can position it as your service, but we'll actually be in the background helping you execute those things. So that's a number of things we're doing. There's my book. do a lot of speaking. So enough about me. If you have any questions, please email me. I'll have contact information at the end of the presentation. So let's talk about Twitter. So our ultimate goal as publishers, as niche publishers, or any kind of publisher for whatever markets we serve is we want to be the trusted expert resource, right? That's We're creating trusted ongoing information, and we need to do that today wherever our customers are at online. In the past, it was good enough to get away with a, let's say, print publication or just an event, but as things are rolling out, we know that we need to make sure that we're wherever our customers are at. So I want you to keep this in mind because it's a core reason about why you need to get involved in Twitter. So I also think about this, and this is specifically when it comes to social media and being active online. I want you to know how many tickets you have. So I want you to know from this perspective, the more content and the more connections that you have online, you actually create a powerful online asset. Um, Dan McCarthy from NCI talks about this all the time, and I love it when he talks about the number of Twitter followers you have, the number of Facebook fans you have, the number of RSS blog subscribers. Those all create an asset so that you can get into more conversations with more of the right types of readers and the more of the right type of cu types of customers. Now, Twitter plays a role right in the middle of this because your customers are using Twitter right now, whether you know it or not. So it's a place where we need to be hanging out if you're not hanging out there right now. And so I want you to think about it from that perspective. Like, for example, if there's a key industry show right now that every one of your readers or pink customers were at, you better be, you'd be there, right? Well, the same thing goes for Twitter. Your customers are there right now. And if you don't have a presence there, I think you're leaving a lot of opportunity on the table. So we'll, we'll talk about that in a little bit as well. So I want you to think about this when it comes to creating your online footprint. As the leading expert in your industry, from a information standpoint, you really need to become the magnet. And that means that you have to become the magnet and draw people to you from wherever your customers are at. Now, we're talking about Twitter today, Facebook and LinkedIn and Dig if it's relevant, and search engines on Google and the whole thing. So we have tons of competition today from all over the place, including our customers. Um, and our readers. So we make sure that we are involved in the areas that our readers are at in order to um, do all we need to do from an online perspective and really create brand value online. So this is just another rationale for Twitter. So getting specifically into Twitter, I do want to share these uh, this information. This is actually a brand new research study we'll be coming out with in the next few weeks from Marketing Profs, John 42. American Business Media and the Business Marketing Association, and we surveyed over a thousand business marketers. These are the top four places that they share content. Twitter's number one, so 55%. Facebook, blogs, and LinkedIn. So what's funny is that that your customers, your either your readers or your paying customers, they share their content for the most part on Twitter. So I think that's what we're talking about. There's a big opportunity where your customers are really becoming their own publishers. They're really sharing their own information, and they're having conversations via Twitter. So from there, we're going to have some problems. So we'll talk about today how we can sort of get involved and take the next steps. All right, so there's the bird. There's Twitter. We're going to have some fun with this. I'm going to show you today. Hopefully, by the end of this presentation, you'll say, well, maybe it's not so stupid. Maybe we should get involved. I do tell you that when I first signed up to Twitter, I thought it was the stupidest thing in the world. So if you're there and you think that there's, like, why would anybody do this? I'm with you. I completely get it. Um, it was about two years ago for me when I signed up. And now, honestly, it is one of the most valuable tools we use. And it is just a tool. It's just like, you know, email is a tool or blogging's a tool or Facebook's a tool. It's just a tool. It's part of your overall program, but it can be a very powerful part of your overall program. Twitter. So here's the basic Twitter page. I've got a custom Twitter page set up. Genta Joe is my call sign. Um, it shows the number of followers and then has kind of your day-to-day -day updates. And actually, this is from yesterday, one of my updates that I sent you. So let's go through specifically what Twitter is if you're having a hard time getting a handle on it. So it, it's a social networking 
or many people call it a microblogging service. So it enables us to send and read messages, and those are called tweets. So we're getting kind of funny now, but those are called tweets. So Twitter, when you send messages back and forth, those are called tweets. And they're actually 140 character messages. They're actually very small. We'll talk about that in a second. But you can end up following people you like, and others can follow you, but they do not have to be the same. So it's not like um, in Facebook where you friend somebody, where in order to be friends, you both have to friend each other. This is not the case with Twitter. Anybody can follow you on Twitter, and you can follow anyone. So you can follow uh, CNN on Twitter if you want to, but they won't necessarily follow you back. You could follow me, for example. I might not follow you back, or I might follow you, and you know you won't follow me back. That's okay. What that means is that if I don't follow you, I'm not seeing what you're posting. But if I do, I'm seeing what you are posting on a daily basis, depending on how I'm viewing that. Well, if you look a little bit closer on the left side, so there's me, Joe Polizzi, Cleveland, Ohio. There's my blog that I want to send people to. A short description of who I am. I'm also the chief content officer for at Junta42, the other call sign I have, following followers. And then there's also these things called lists. So I'm on 572 lists that people have made. So people put lists together to coordinate Twitter followers into expertise areas. And so if you, like, let's say your expertise area is agriculture. So maybe you'll be on a number of agriculture lists for, like, agriculture news or for the poultry industry or whatever the case is, whatever your niche is. All right, so more on what is Twitter. So a tweet can't be any more than 140 characters. And here's a couple of examples right here just to kind of show you the length of them. Because it's... Um, about it this way. It's sort of like a text message that everyone can read if they're looking for it. People can use Twitter through different ways, and you can get information through Twitter in different ways. So I could be looking, I could be getting it directly from the website, and I'll show you different ways to do that, but I could be actually following you and getting your updates. Or I could do searches through different places on the web and information about you, because let's say in the first one, let's say I'm I'm searching for CMO.com, and this tweet might come up. But I'll show you how to do that in a second, so I don't want to get too far ahead. The um, the Bitly address, so when you say, it's, look at the tweet that says, does the new CMO.com have the right content strategy? If you look at the bitly.com, that is a, called a URL shortener. Because you only have 140 characters, you have to use URL shorteners. Now, the great thing is if you use the right Twitter management tool, this will do this automatically for you, so I'll show you that in a second. And just to give you an example, so here's a you know CMO.com and Junta42. We're having a little bit of back and forth here, so there's a lot of conversations that happen on Twitter. They're just not happening simultaneously. They're happening very quickly, but they're not having, happening simultaneously. So it's not like instant messaging. It may take an hour or a day or a couple of days before responses go back and forth, or it can in a whirlwind. And we'll show you that in a second. So you know why? Because your readers are there. That's the, if you have nobody that is on Twitter, so let's say that your target audience are you know, let's say blind people who have no access to the Internet, you have a reason to be on Twitter. But if your customers are, readers are on Twitter, then you need to be there just like you need to be on LinkedIn or Facebook if your customers are there. So I want you to really look at who you're really targeting here. And if they're on Twitter, then you need to be there. And most of the group that I've have seen in B2B and B2C, there are strong, influential populations on Twitter and using Twitter right now. Okay, so what is, you know, called Twitter search, so you can actually go to search.twitter.com and you can type in keywords. So I might want to track everybody that's talking about content marketing, and that's exactly what the visual is you're seeing. So I might want to get an RSS feed or a notification, if you see on the right there, that every time somebody talks about content marketing or let's say the you know the World Series or, or, or Kodak Film or whatever the case is, I might want to get a notification because I've, I can see, okay, somebody's talking about something that's important to me or my brand or my editor or whatever the case is, and I need to figure out what to do with that. Maybe I'm just listening. Maybe I'm just, maybe I need to do something with that to create a piece of editorial content. Maybe I'm doing a little bit of listening because my sales rep needs to know who that's going on with one of my key advertisers. There's a lot of reasons to do that and listen. So it's a very powerful listening tool. Uh, 
also it's very important from a stability standpoint. And I, this is a blog post that we did in December of 2009. And if you see the little place there where it's circled, that's 788 tweets. That means that 788 different people actually forwarded it out to all their followers. So they, on average, and if you look at some averages, the average Twitter user probably has, you know, let's say 100 to 300 followers. So that if you take 788 times 300 people that are the average person has following them, that's sent out to a lot of people. We had tens and tens of thousands of views just to this article because it was spread all over the place. So if you set up Twitter sharing components as part of your content, and we'll talk about this a little bit more later, very, very powerful to spread your really amazing content and cast that wide net on areas that you might not be able to reach otherwise. Okay, you get it for one reader feedback. So here's a comment at the top. Person about Zappos. I love Zappos. Customer service is great. So you can get reader feedback because most likely there is somebody, if you're a somewhat powerful, influential brand in your industry, somebody's talking about you. They're talking about you or they're talking about things that matter to you. So we need to be paying attention to that and we need to do something about it. And then on the bottom, just it's the, one of the greatest places to sh actually share information. It's different from Facebook in the fact that a lot of personal information is shared on Facebook. For the most part, Twitter is business. There's mostly business people sharing um, important, influential information. They're sharing it because they want to position themselves as experts, and they want to share that out, and they want to give that type of content out there. So it basically um, what happens is the thought leaders and the influencers in, in your in, influencers in your industry are the ones that really have taken to Twitter years ago and have built a following behind it. The why for business, right? You can have direct conversations with customers on, on Twitter. Um, you share your content via Twitter once you, and you get a following. Just like, think of it this way. Let's say you have uh, 20,000 people signed up to your email newsletters or you have 15,000 controlled circulation that you send out um, to your for your print magazine or, or weekly or monthly or whatever the case is. You can do the same thing with Twitter. It's just different kinds of information. So you're sharing your online content, and you might have 10,000 people following you on Twitter that want, that want to and prefer to get their information from you in that way. And that get pe then it gets people back to your site. Because we talked about that short link, then on that, and then they go back to that site or go where you send them to go. You get immediate feedback from your followers, your fans, and your eaters. Definitely get more traffic. Um, we get anywhere, depending on the month, from the 15 percent of our total traffic on Junta 42 from Twitter. I'm not saying that you would necessarily get that because we work that channel hard. It's our most important uh, channel that we work of all the uh, social sharing channels. But the possibilities are there, and that's a lot of people. That means that we're getting five to six to seven thousand people per month coming to our site directly from Twitter that wouldn't normally go to our site. So very powerful indeed. And then really, you can grow your business. We have directly gotten people to sign up for our services, to download our white papers, um, to do just about everything you can think of that you would offer as a publisher. We get them directly from Twitter that people would have never known about us if they weren't searching for the types of content that we were sharing on Twitter. So big, big opportunity. All right, so let's look at some research here, and this is from eMarketer. But if you look at the way that marketers are using Twitter. Most of it is for listening. Most of it, are, most companies are actually using it as a listening tool. And it is the most powerful real-time listening tool that you could possibly imagine. When you think about doing focus groups, the focus, group, focus groups are pretty much dead today because you can get so much real-time information for free if you're just listening to the right keywords. And then what's also very powerful about it, social media, if you think about a lot of people I talk to are like, what's my social media strategy? Well, social media is part of everything you do. So if you do events, if you do a print magazine, if you do e-newsletters, social media just needs to be integrated with everything that you're doing because people want to reach you in different ways. So, of course, you see on there driving traffic, um, going at, getting uh, a business, uh, tweet timing, driving sales, all kinds of different reasons to do it. And you have to figure out what your reason is are to do it as well and it's probably in order to, the biggest reason I think for publishers is is to create more value, create more asset value, to widen that net and to get more of the people that you can't reach right now 
focus on you and your story and you being part of the conversation with them. Who uses Twitter? I love this stat because most people think that kids use Twitter when I talk to them. I actually did a presentation for a large company last week, and they said, Joe, why do we need to be on Twitter? Like only teenagers are on Twitter. And I said, you know that hardly any teenagers are on Twitter? There's nobody, no teenagers using Twitter. They're texting. They think that Twitter's stupid. 65% of all users are over the age of 35 using Twitter. This is a business tool for the most part. Average household income, 75000 So I would say look at types of readers that you have and look at the advertisers that you have. It probably fits right into this demographic somewhere. So they're most likely um, customers are using Twitter right now. All right. A bit of a break. Hopefully that answered sort of the basics of, of what Twitter is. It'll start to make more sense when we go through some of these Twitter tips and tools and things to make it. And then if we if you have specific questions, please, you know, start asking your questions and we'll get to them at the end and we'll make sure we have plenty of time for you. All right. So is signing up and getting things right. First of all, you need to go to Twitter and you need to make sure you have a handle that's not taken. So my handle is Junta Joe. So you need to and make sure that you have a name and a picture of you. So let's say if it, let's say you have to do two things as a publishing executive. One, you need to create your Twitter identity for your brand itself, and it's okay to have your brand logo there. That's fine, but you need to have one for yourself as well because if you are an executive in publishing and you're not on Twitter, you're going to have problems here in the future because you need to be on that, especially if you're in publishing and you're not using a major publishing tool. So sign up. And then you you can have your own personal one. I don't think it matters there. But from a, I know a lot of publishing companies that are like, well, we want to get all of our employees signed up to Twitter, but we don't want them to do their own personal handles. We want them to have them business handles. So you might do a, let's say it's a Joe, a De um, and then maybe an abbreviation of your publication, and get everybody on the same similar call sign and just do it that. Way. Just tell everybody, here's how we're doing it. We're gonna set the uh, Twitter. Twitter, uh, Twitter addresses up for everyone in our company, and here's I want you to do it. Use your first name, and then do a dash, and then do this abbreviation, and then you can set everybody up. And put the easiest way to do it is just be go ahead and set up, have somebody set everybody up for them, and then you can teach them how to use it. And we'll get that to that in a second. So I want you to then look in the lower right hand corner here. So what's so is besides your very professional headshot that you need to have if it's your account. You don't want any pictures of you know you doing a bender the night before or anything. This should be this should be a very professional picture um, that you have taken. I would stay away from the personal. I would go through a you know, nice mugshot uh, image of you. You'll get more people following you that way. Put your location down. Uh, what it act is, where you're from. Your website should probably be your your, um, your branded business or your branded publication website or your blog would be your best if that's your address there if you have a blog for your um, for your brand and then a very succinct bio of who you are um, if this is if you're creating a Twitter page for your business you should say clearly who the person is that's running that or if you have multiple people say it's multiple people so um, be very specific about that because you want there should be a person behind every Twitter page. People want to connect with people, not people want to connect with businesses. So you got to make sure that you have all your like once you set up, make sure you set up all these areas under your account and have these filled out completely if possible because you'll get more people following you then. So let's say you've just signed up. Then what I want you to do is download a program called TweetDeck. Now, TweetDeck is a Twitter management tool. There are three major Twitter management tools, and what I mean by Twitter management tool, ways to manage your Twitter account that you can do it um, individually or manage multiple accounts. You can do this with TweetDeck, TweetGrid, or Hootsuite. I don't honestly care. You need one or the other. I've always loved TweetDeck. I think that it's the best. It's the easiest to use. And I'm showing you a picture right here. This is a picture of TweetDeck. So what you can do is, and this is where you really see the power. So the middle column there where it says content marketing, that's where I can see live who's talking about content marketing right now. Where I can see a decision, hey, do I have to, should I comment on that blog? 
Is this intelligence that I should send to research? Is this something that I should send to sales? I mean, there's all kinds of really important information that's, that can get you involved in these conversations. And maybe you say, hey, maybe I should follow that person. Maybe that's an influencer. And then on the right, where it says, at Jump to Joe, I see all the people that are talking about me. I might want to say thank you. I might want to connect with them. I might want to have lunch with them. I tell you what, I probably met more people through Twitter, like actual met, met people in person through Twitter, than any other tool. It's very, very powerful for networking. So what TweetDeck will do, it will organize based on the things you want to search for and the, th the people that are talking about you or your brands. So it's just it's almost like Google Alerts on steroids. So I'd say you need to make sure you download something like TweetDeck once you get started. Okay, hashtags are very important. I don't know if you've heard of hashtags, but a hashtag is a number symbol with some, some topic behind it. So that's the way that people organize tweets. So if you wanted to follow all the strings on content strategy, you'd do hashtag content strategy. Or maybe there was this big discussion about the World Series championship and you're a big baseball fan, so you maybe would... Uh, look at uh, hashtag World Series or hashtag Kodak. I mean, whatever the case is, you want to make sure that you follow those, and you could actually put those in, into your search on TweetDeck so you can follow those as they come up. So you don't have to go back. Like a lot of the uh, newcomers to Twitter, they use Twitter.com to manage all their tweets, and it's very, very ineffective. And most of the people that do that and they don't use a Twitter management system, they, they stop using it right away because most people that are on Twitter, they don't get it and they stop using it. The people that persist and then go and use a TweetDeck or a HootSuite or a TweetGrid, those are the ones that keep going and get a lot of followers and then actually do something with it. So you'll see in the sample that one is a hashtag content strategy. So you can search on that um, going to something like search.twitter.com or in your Twitter dashboard. Uh, okay, so here's some to-do news. The question that Twitter wants you to answer answer is what are you doing and for the most part nobody cares it's like um, that's the argument that you get from a lot of people is like hey, nobody cares what i had for breakfast or that i just took a shower and you're right nobody cares what do people do on twitter the influential people share really important information about their niche area uh, i've seen more people get book deals and get the uh, uh, blog that are, are um, more trafficked in the world that really position themselves as experts. I've seen publications grow their readership and all needs development through Twitter by sharing really important information. So you gotta make sure, this is even on your personal account. You don't talk about necessarily what you're doing. Share really important information about you, what you want to be the expert in. Be democratic. You can't, and this is where publications have a problem because they all, most publications I talk to just wanna share their own information. Well, you can't do that in Twitter. You have to be democratic about it. So you have to mix other people's content in, not just your own. So what you do is you're searching for all that information, right, on your keywords. Well, if you see something that's really intriguing to you, then you share it, and you do something like this one, the missing link in journal and um, curricula, community engagement. So we put the link there, that's the sh URL shortener, the tweet deck automatically will create the URL shortener for you, and then via the person that shared it. So what happens is that person sees that you shared it, and then they go check you out, and they probably follow you, or they might start sharing your information. And it's a big viral push, and it, it takes a little while to get this going, but it's amazing how much people will start to talk about you when you do this right. Listen, we've already talked about this. I mean, the biggest brands in the world, um, you know, JetBlue, um, I'll, I'll tell you this because this is actually a really good uh, story. I think we've got time for it. Here's what JetBlue does. There's a passenger that a father, they get separated from their daughter on a JetBlue flight, and they're about to board in an hour. And they, the people at the service counter cannot find a way to get them to sit together on the JetBlue flight. And they're very, very upset. And the father goes ahead and tweets that at JetBlue and says, I'm very upset. I couldn't get on the plane with my daughter. And what happened before they boarded the plane they were able to sit next to each other because the people in corporate were listening to this. They heard it. They were following Twitter. They worked it out. They did all the logistics. They had to work it out. And by the time the two boarded, they were sitting next to each other. How about that for powerful customer service? There's been a million people that have told that story. And JetBlue has more people that are flying on JetBlue because they've done that little act. And it was all came from listening on Twitter. And just a little thing about the Comcast guy, the, um, um, Cares, I think his name is Ralph, 
um, the guy that oversees the Comcast account uh, for um, Twitter account, he has been all over the country doing tours. I think he's got a book coming out. He is absolutely famous for what he's done just listening on Comcast and saying, like, for example, he's asking this um, Trillis, can I help with anything? It's like, who would think of that, that Comcast would do that? So it's a very, it's a listening platform. At least they know that you're listening to them. If you just have ideas about things that you need to be doing, it's very powerful at, at listening. Okay, so here's a powerful thing that you, a tool that you can need to do, and you can integrate very easily into your site depending on what kind of architecture you're using. Mashable does this great. They integrate their site with Twitter, Facebook, and Google Ads. You'll see that down the left-hand column. The top one is Twitter. This is something called TweetMeme. Uh, TweetMeme is a little widget that you put on that pe people can easily share um, your content out on Twitter by just clicking the retweet button. So this is something you can add tomorrow to sh so that people share your content on Twitter. And once you get all your people up on Twitter, this is just a very easy thing to do, and I would get it started as soon as you can. Okay, how do you find people to follow you? Uh, something called People Search. Um, there's the URL at the bottom, or you could just put in Twitter People Search into Google, and you'll find it. But you could, so I was searching for myself, Joe Polizzi, and there you pop up. So if you're searching for one of your customers, a VP of marketing, an influential reader, or whatever, and you want to follow them, great. It'll tell you who they are, where they are, and you can click on them and follow them right, right away. Um, if you want to find relevant people around an industry topic, so I'm searching here for content marketing, and what's really cool is that I came up first year for content marketing. But so you, you put content marketing in quotes or you put, uh, you know, agriculture or whatever the case is, and it will bring up the most relevant people that you should follow in that industry. And then you can just go down the list and if off the side, you can just click follow, 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 and you can follow all those people or send them notes or whatever you want to do. Uh, you could search followers. So if you said, hey, I want to know all the followers of Joe and I want to follow all his followers, which I wouldn't recommend, but you can do that. You can use something called Tweep Search and you put some call symbol in there and it will tell you all the people that are following me and what they're doing and what they're, uh, where they're from and what their last tweet was. Hello is a Twitter directory. So you can search by keyword, like I did here for content marketing, or you can go into deep channels like marketing, public relations, go into excuse, excuse, different industry sects. Uh, so you can go into Twello and do that. So if you want to find out who are the most popular bloggers in sports management, you can click on that and it will give you a list of the most popular bloggers in those areas. Twitter L. Followers by keywords, so it's a, just another t tool. So if you can put in your keyword, and it will, um, and you can also put in your Twitter account. If you go to Twitter URL, and it will um, give you here's more people like you that you should be following, or based on the types of things you talk about, you should be following these people. And we've got some Twitter do nots, so very important here. All right, so here's some Twitter do nots. Um, constant thing about you won't get you anywhere. It's just like going to a cocktail party, and you're not going to go to a cocktail party, pass out your business cards, and say, hey, everybody follow me. Here's what I have to sell. It's not going to work that way. It's more you're mingling around. You're talking about interesting stuff. You want to make yourself look interesting so people want to hang out with you and want to talk to you. That's kind of what Twitter is. So the more interesting things that you can come up with and the more you talk to other people and actually integrate your message with other people, the more pop that you're going to be and the more you can do with it. Number two, you mistake public tweets and, tweets and direct messages. So if you just send a message to me and say, at Junta Joe, love the presentation on Twitter today. Thanks for sharing. Can I get the direct, uh, can I get the presentation? Maybe that you'll send that to me. Send that and everybody and their brother will see that message. Now, direct messages, which on TweetDeck has a D in front of it. It's called a direct message. That's more like an email. It will only go to me. But a direct message only happens if I'm following you and you're following me. If that if those, that connection is not made like on a Facebook friend, you will not be able to make that message. So you got to make sure that if you're going to send me something personal through direct message, make sure you know the difference between what's going on publicly and what's going out as a direct message. Three cryptic replies like, hey, thanks, or I know. Try to stay away from from that if possible because I want you to think about every time, even though you're, if you're talking to somebody and everybody can see that conversation, some people are getting into that conversation for the first time. So so let's say that um, you said, hey, can you send me that 
presentation on Twitter. I'm not just going to say, here you go, and the link. I'm going to say, here's that basic Twitter presentation, um, and then get the link. So at least people say, hey, there's a Twitter basics presentation. I might want to check that out or share that. So the way you word things and what you link to is going to give you better opportunity for things to be shared. Links only are a big no-no. Like That could be spam for all we know. Visit. So make sure that if you send a link to somebody, you give explanation as to what that link is like we just talked about. And number the big, big pet peeve of mine, auto-direct messages. It's like the spam of Twitter. So what happens is, is that a lot of people will set up their account and you can set it up so that when somebody follows you, you send them an automatic direct message to them and say, hey, thanks for following, like this guy. So this guy says, hey, thanks for adding my Twitter, my, or for uh, meeting you on Twitter. Visit my blog at, at this. Um, those people that do that, I delete them right away. I don't want to follow them because they obviously don't get it. This is an um, – uh, an email that I do not, or that's a direct message I don't want to get. They're just trying to spam me. Now, if you sent me a personal uh, direct message back that says, Joe, really appreciate the follow, love your stuff, let's talk sometime, that's fine. But the auto direct messages is the ones that we really want to stay away from and not, uh, not go into if possible. So make sure you do not do auto direct messages. All right, so 35 minutes, that wasn't too bad. Bring this off of here. Um, Dave, I don't know if we've got any questions here. I'm going back into my account here. Yeah, we have a few. Um, uh, throw a couple out here, and we'll start getting to them. Sure. I'll, I guess I'll go ahead and just read them. Um, basically, how often do you suggest someone tweets, and does this vary per market, like a party magazine versus like a music magazine versus a business magazine or a bridal magazine? Or Obviously, you know niche magazines can go on forever. So, sure, exactly. Uh, what are your suggestions as far as that um, goes? There, there's... I've seen people be successful with one to two tweets a day, and I've seen people be successful with, believe it or not, 30 or 40. Um, I don't necessarily recommend that. My average, actually, you can find this out on a number of places. I will tell you like what, what my average is. There's a, there's a uh, site out there called Twitter Grader, and if you go to Twitter Grader and you can put in your handle, you can find out, okay, Joe tweets six to nine times per day, and Joe, you know, Joe replies back, 25% of the time. It'll tell you the complete statistics of, of, of how my tweeting patterns. I would say the most important thing is don't do it in bunches. You try to kind of do it throughout the day if possible. Uh, so you don't do like six tweets at 8 o'clock in the morning and then you don't do anything. So a lot of people, what some people do is they have it and you can do this and I just don't recommend it. That's why I didn't put it in there. You can set up your tweets to link with your RSS feed. So some RSS feeds like FeedBurner, they send them all out at one time. So let's say you have six articles that go out at 8 o'clock in the morning. Then it'll hit everybody with six tweets, right, at 8 o'clock, and it looks like you're not – it looks like it's done automatically, and actually you could see it's coming from, like, Twitter feed or something automatic. So I would say spread them out. Just make sure that it's always valuable. If it's always valuable information and you're always helpful in being sharing – you can with your resources. I would say if you're just starting out, try to do two or three, three a day. Two or three a day, share two, like something in the morning, maybe something at the end of the day at work, maybe some, one thing at night. And you're just sharing information to start to build up um, a following because if you only tweet one, one or two times a day, you're probably not going to get as much of a following because the more you use hashtags and the more you tweet about relevant things that are, people are searching for that, they'll find you and start following you. So I would just say make sure it's valuable, relevant and make sure you don't bunch it up. Okay. That sounds – and do you have any – is there any – it's just a matter of relevancy when it's per market. You, there's not any – like business to business in like, a, you know, one to, you know, versus good versus ten or, you know, party magazines. Nothing – there's not, not industry specific. It's no, mainly. it's not. It, it is not industry specific at all. I would – I mean, I, I know people that are in agriculture versus um, music, more consumer side. Uh, versus like design engineering, and it really, as long as they're valuable, I would say that, boy, I, I like to tweet probably five to ten times a day. As long as they're valuable, basically. As long as that, yeah, as long as they're valuable, I think you're going to be good to go. And the great thing is, if you're at a publication, you probably have, a, you know, tons of content, right, that you can be sharing. Also, you have, you're listening out there, you're understanding who's talking about what, and you can share that information as well and build a following in that way. Okay. All right. Um, another question here. Is it okay to set up auto feeds into your Twitter account? 
i.e. from your blog or Facebook post? Um, it's okay to do that. I I actually did that for years. I just started taking that off, actually, because what I did was every time that I'd post a blog post or we would post an article on Junta42, I had it auto-feed through my account and it started to come off as fake. So you just got to make sure you can do that and you can completely automate it, and it's no problem to do that. But people know. Um, people know when you're just like, blasting out information. So there's one thing about sharing really valuable information that's either yours or somebody else's. It's another thing to just come off as fake by blasting it all out. So I don't have anything against it. You just have to be careful that a lot of those services like Twitter feed is a service that you can set up your RSS feed and directly link it with your Twitter account and your blog. But the problem is is that they send them out all at once in a lot of cases. There are a lot of other services. There's a service called Social Oomph, believe it or not, that you can time all of your, um, like you can say, oh, I don't know, 8 o'clock in the morning, I want to time when I go out at 10 and 12 and 2. So you can go to Social Oomph and set that up. I believe that you can do that on Hootsuite as well. So there's a lot of places that you can time the tweets if you said, hey, I want to have one go out every couple of hours, but I'd be around to do that. You can set them up at different times during the day. All right. A couple more questions. Uh, can you explain the difference between uh, Bing, Dig, and LinkedIn? Sure, I'd be happy to. Okay. Uh, um, Bing is Microsoft's Google, Microsoft search engine. It used to be called Microsoft Live Search, and now they put a lot of money and branding behind Bing. So it's just a search engine. Uh, Dig is a social – it's a uh, online bookmarking tool. Um, let's see. The, if you're not used to that term, how would you exp, how would I explain that? So basically, what you can do, you can go to Dig, and you can take a piece of your content from your site and you share it on, on Dig. Everybody will see that link, and then people will they then they call it Dig it. So if they dig it, they like it. Some like like in Facebook, and the more digs you get, is the more popular it becomes, and then more people will start to see it. It's very, very popular in the consumer side, consumer electronics, tech, social media, those types of things. So you could create uh, an article that, or, let's say, celebrity pop culture, and it could go, um, it could go on dig quickly, and, and then you it literally have millions of people look at that article. In niche publishing, it's not as popular. I started using dig a couple of years ago, and I don't use it much anymore. Uh, just because the types of articles we talk about in content marketing aren't the type that a lot of people like to share on Dig. The last one, what was it, uh, David? Was it um, uh, LinkedIn? It was the LinkedIn. Okay, LinkedIn. If you are a business executive, LinkedIn is probably the most popular social media tool to use. Um, it's almost like a living Rolodex, so people can you can friend people. They become part of your contact list, and then you get all their contact information. And then what you can do is everybody that they're connected to is in your network. So if you wanted to meet somebody, let's say that you friended me on LinkedIn. So we're connections. It's called first-person connections on LinkedIn. Then you can um, you, you can actually see all my connections on there. And let's say you wanted to meet somebody that's in one of my connections. You could send me a note and say, I want to meet um, you know John Smith in your area because I wanted to talk to him about this project or uh, I met his cousin or whatever the case is, then you would send me a note and then I would make an introduction for you on LinkedIn. LinkedIn so very po the, the, there's a couple things on LinkedIn that are very pos uh, uh, popular. One is LinkedIn um, answers so that if you're trying to position yourself as an expert in a certain industry, there are people asking questions about it all the time. So go to LinkedIn Answers, and you could actually answer a lot of those questions, position yourself as an expert. There's also LinkedIn Groups. So there's particular groups around every single um, topic known to humankind, and you can go in there and join certain groups and be part of those activities. A lot of those groups aren't um, – there's a lot of activity in a lot of those groups, but I still think there's – there's an opportunity because they still have, you know, even if you've got 300 or 400 niche people sign up to a group and not a lot of activity, you could sort of be the leader of that group if you take advantage of that. All right. All right. Uh, we have, I have one last question, I believe. Um, can you explain the best uh, quote unquote person in the company who should tweet? Should it be the publisher or owner, the editor, the content manager? And does this vary per industry? Okay. Um, there's, 
it's usually somebody in marketing that tweet like okay, okay there's a couple different things so I'm going to give you some disclaimers here first of all if you're if you're a publishing company you should probably enlist your employees and everybody should have their own accounts I worked with a publisher um, this was a couple months they got every one of their employees circulation uh, marketing production everybody got signed up to their own business Twitter account and what happens is they all have their own connections and this is just a great way to widen that net and get everybody to, I mean all you have to do is really set a social media policy if you're not familiar with a social media policy, you could type in IBM social media policy. It's a great policy you could look at for sharing information in social networks so you don't have to, a lot of companies like completely ban the use of Twitter and Facebook, which I think is wrong. I think you just need to set parameters for usage. So um, I would say from that standpoint, go ahead and look at that to get everybody involved in that. Now, if it's just your brand, um, it could be one or two people. It could be an editor or it could be a marketing person and it, or it could be two people. Just make sure that in the About Us section you say who that is. Um, and you might have two different brand accounts. You might have one account that is specific for um, your advisor. So let's say you're educating them on marketing concepts specific to your niche and then you've got one that's going to your readers that's in line with the readers of your publication and that would maybe be done by the editor. So maybe one is done, the publisher, uh, the uh, advertiser one is done by the marketing person, and then the reader one is done by the editor person. Actually, we have one more question. Sure. We see that we have um, Junta, or Junta Joe, and then you have Junta 42. Yes. Can you explain why you have two, and should other people have more than one? Joe is my personal one. Junta 42 is my brand account. So okay. Oversee the brand account. I have somebody else that oversees that for me. So okay. it's the same thing for a publisher. Let's say that you're B2B magazine. B2B magazine has uh, B2, at B2B magazine as their Twitter handle. That's for the publication, and that's sort of from the brand itself. And then you have Ella, at Ellis Booker at E Booker. That's he's the chief editor of the publication. Well, he has his own account. So you have one as a person, and you have one as a brand. So the way that I would set it up is that you have one or two branded ones. Um, if you cover everybody, uh, your both your public, your uh, your advertisers and your readers through one, that's fine. So create your you know app magazine account or app uh, publisher account, and then make sure that everybody in your company um, has their own Twitter account as well, and so that you can all work to the same goal. Um, a lot of publishers are a little bit scared to put everybody out there. It just takes some time. Um, you, that's why you need some internal training and get people to show how do they use it and how do they, which type of content did they use and which type do we want to share and all that. And there's a really big opportunity, I think, for you to very, very quickly become an online expert and social media expert if you're just using the tools. Um, I lied a second ago. There's That's one fine. More Keep point. them coming. What you got? Sorry. Sorry about that. No, okay. uh, that's a really good question. What's the best, quickest way to grow followers? The best, quick way to grow followers is to. Okay, well, you know, those are two different. <laughs> what's the quickest way? And then what's the best okay. way? Okay, I'll take the quickest way first. Okay. The quickest way first is there are a lot of tools out there that. that okay, there's a tool out there called, let's say, for example, it's called Tweet Adder. And there, there's these computer programs, and you can sign up for Tweet Adder, and you can use your account, and it will, you can do searches. So let's say that um, you wanted to search all my, you wanted to fo follow all the people following me. You can go to my account, and you could scrape all those and send, let's say, 300, 400 a day uh, followers to, to um, all those people. And then if they don't follow you back in three days, you unfollow them, and you keep doing that process till you get more and more people following you. Um, there's a uh, ratio called the the friend the follower not following ratio. It's called FF ratio, and it's those that are following you versus the ones you're following. You really what you want is is it's either 50%, so equal follower to not follower, or less people that you're following and more people following you. It's sort of a um, stature thing where people think you're you, you're you're more of an expert because you're more people are following you than you're following back. If you see it the other way around, you use one of those uh, tweet adder tools to add people quicker. Um, you're going to be way off for a while 
and it's really not the most natural way to do it. And I would say that the better way to do it, and so you say the best way, that's the quickest way. You just start automatically adding people. You don't really know who they are, but you're sort of adding it around somebody following or keyword you could do. So the best way to do it is just to follow your customers, to follow your readers that you know about. And following these keywords and you're going to key blogs, you are, um, you're following those people that are important. And if they see you important back, they will follow you too. And the more you start spreading really good information, you'll get more people following you. The more that you start promoting your Twitter address and your signature on your website, on your blogs, doing all those things, more people will follow you. So, I mean, there was a time when I only had 50 followers, and, it, my, and I was following 100 people, and, you know, uh, 50 people were following me, and it looked way out of whack. But as you start using the tool, you get more people following you. And now I got on and I got like 9,000 or something people following me. And it's now it's a real asset that we can use for a number of things. So, um, so I would say those are the two ways. I would just stay, start doing it the right way, do a lot of blocking and tackling, share a lot of good information. Uh, we just launched Social Tract, and Social Tract, you know, with, within just two weeks, I think we've got like 79 followers. So it doesn't, I mean, that's maybe not great, but it takes time to do that. We're going to build it the right way. So by the end of the year, we might have 500 or 600 followers, and I would say for publications to follow the same thing. Okay. That's all. Awesome. And for instance, this is, you know, real life example of how stuff works. If we were to follow you, you would be, twi you know, tweeting with different social media type of corpse here and there, correct? Um. Again, if you follow me, you know, we'll use. We'll like, if we follow you, you would tell us about social media and, and different. You would be giving an added little um, tip. There yeah. So basically, yeah. So so if you said we want to know more about content marketing and social media, yes, follow at Junta Joe, and then you'll get um, probably six to seven tweets a day, and I only tweet about content marketing and social media stuff. All right, well, you're so gonna it's have almost like, you know, and that's what we're talking about. You know, everybody's a publisher today. Everybody creates their own publishing channel, and Twitter is just one publishing channel. Mm -hmm. um, that uh, why it's tough to be in the publishing business today, and we've got to focus really on creating powerful customer experiences throughout all the places that our customers are hanging out at. So okay. follow me. I share all kinds of advice all the time, and I try to look at really, I mean, I use TweetDuck, so if I see really good, uh, information and my followers that, that I look at, then I'll share that out with everybody. Okay. Um, I guess we'll have a, you know this recording for people uh, here soon, and we'll be sending that out. Uh, we're still working on that, that aspect of everything. But, uh, Joe, appreciate it. We'll uh, look forward to seeing you again in four weeks. And uh, everyone, just be on the lookout uh, for the uh, subject matter uh, in a couple weeks here of seminar or webinar but anyway Joe, i think that was an amazing job i know we uh, personally learned a lot and hopefully everyone else did too thanks david all right thank you very much all right bye-bye